Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, today I'm going to start a series on risk adjustment. Risk adjustment. Several of you have emailed me about risk adjustment, how to learn risk adjustment, how to become certified in risk adjustment, what is risk adjustment. So I'm going to start and introduce you to risk adjustment today. All right, let's get started. All right, got a PowerPoint presentation for you here on risk adjustment. What is risk adjustment? First, let me tell you that healthcare is quickly transforming from a fee for service payment model. Remember back in the day when a doctor would charge you for an office visit what he wanted to charge you? Where providers were pay paid based on volume of services to various quality based payment methodologies. We've heard about MSDRGs, DRGs, RBRVSs. These new payment systems are focused on promoting quality of care and creating better outcomes. One of these new payment methodologies is risk adjustment. The goal of risk adjustment is to reward efficiency and high quality care for sicker patients. These patients require much more clinical and financial resources to treat. Okay, that's by Colleen Giannasto. So, the definition of risk adjustment by Sherry Poe Bernard. It's a process by which health insurers are compensated based on the underlying health status of their enrollees, thereby protecting their insurers against losses due to high risk, high cost patients. Based on what Monica M. Watson says, risk adjustment is a statistical process that considers the underlying health status and health spending of patients when examining their health care outcomes or health care costs. Codemaster Coach says, risk adjustment is a process that takes into consideration the resources necessary to fully care for a patient while allowing the health insurer to be compensated, thereby allowing them to compensate the provider for health services. Let me give you an example. Two patients, same diagnoses, different care. Patient A is a newly diagnosed with influenza and pneumonia. The patient is 35 years old. The patient has no chronic diseases. Now patient B is newly diagnosed with the same diagnoses, influenza and pneumonia, but this patient is 72 years old and this patient has comorbidities. These comorbidities that this patient has are diabetes type 2, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. So the question here is how would the resources required to care for patient A and patient B differ even though they have the same presenting problem? This is an example by Sherry Poe Bernard. How would the resources differ? Okay, with those same two patients with the same diagnoses and different care, it says here capturing the difference is called risk adjustment. If the comorbidities are not documented and coded for patient B, then the true cost of the encounter is not captured. Comorbidities bring extra risk, requiring extra utilization of resources, and the risk results in adjustment of payment. Now erroneously reporting a more complex diagnosis can also lead to overpayment. So can we understand how with patient A not having these comorbidities, that visit based on the diagnoses, influenza and pneumonia, the reimbursement would be the same for patient A and patient B, but because of these comorbidities, it's going to take more resources to treat patient B. And that's what risk adjustment takes into consideration. The additional resources that's required for patient B. So again, let's look at risk adjustment. It says here, risk adjustment is basically a tool that determines 
how much money is needed to care for a patient based on how healthy or unhealthy the patient is. An actuarial tool used to calibrate payments to health plans or other stakeholders based on the relative health of the at-risk population. And that's by the American Academy of Actuaries. So again, in risk adjustment, the severity of illness as represented by the International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision, Clinical Modification, ICD-10-CM, guys, that code determines payment for insurance companies. I can remember when we only captured the reason for the visit. But now, guys, look how important, how vital it is with risk adjustment. Okay, guys? All right. So... Continue to follow along with me as I do this series on risk adjustment, guys. You've asked for it. It's here. I'll do it. Thanks, guys. Monday, I'll upload another video on continuing our studies of risk adjustment and exactly how or what our role is. Because we're the coders. We generate the ICD-10 code. What our role is and how we handle risk adjustment. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.